I've been working with Jupyter Notebooks and um, Python to analyze some data captured from my camera. The goal of this is eventually to characterize the noise characteristics, different temperatures, establish the curves for the exposure lengths, etc. Um, and then eventually uh, determine the RBI characteristics of the sensor as well. In any case, this seems like a really cool way of uh, pulling that data in and very quickly just combing through it. Um, so what I started off here at the top, this is basically all of the necessary includes, libraries, etc. that that, um, that the scripting is going to need. There's just various, various tools here. NumPy is basically good at handling lots of math, and you have Mat, Matplotlib, AstroPy, etc. Um, won't go into those details. You can run them cell by cell, or you can go up here and run the whole thing all at once. But for now, I'm going to run it cell by cell, and you can see what happens. Notice this over here. Uh, it's blank right now because it hasn't been run yet. Uh, but when I do run it, I can either click on Run here, or I can do Control Return. Um, I can also do Markdown in between to document what's going on, which is really nice, especially as we get into some of the graphing, which I haven't done much of yet, but you'll see the beginnings of it as I represent the image data. All right, so all that did was just load all these parts up here. So this section here, I wanted to make sure that I could actually uh, crop the files, so I did a quick test. Um, based on some information, documentation for um, for this specific function, which is actually cut out 2D. Uh, but to do that, the, the documentation actually referenced creating um, an image array. It's basically an array, actually, not much more than anything else that we're just going to look at visually. So if I run that, uh, you're going to see the image that gets created. And you can see I put a little galaxy down there. That's rendered with the Gaussian 2D right here. I put it at the origin, or the center, 250 by 250. That's the size of it, and that's the tilt of it. Um, pretty straightforward. You can change the color maps here, too, which is really cool. So you can get different rendering of the, um, the monochrome data. All right, so now I'm going to crop in on this. What I did here is I'm going to set the crop center to 250 by 250, which is the center of the prior image. Then I make it 100 pixels wide. And just run that. There you are. You can see how fast it works, too. All right, so here I get down into the weeds. Uh, I tried to document this all out pretty well with the comments. There's an amazing amount of things you can do with this. So basically, the, the initial set here is I'm going to read in all of the data files. I have so far, I think, about 30, 32 meg files. Uh, that this thing is going to read in and process. And I say that so that you can see how quickly it actually does this. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to iterate through those files. I'm going to read, read the header in for each file. I'm going to read the image data for each file. I'm going to create the crop right here. Basically, I'm going to set this. I'm going to basically uh, take the image shape, which is the geometry of the image. So that'll be the X and Y geometry of the image, and basically find the center. So I just divide by two. Um, and then I'm going to set the crop size here. Uh, okay, so here's a little explanation of the information that I want. I think I put a little bit more information in there as I look through it. Um, I'll document that later. So now I actually create the crop. It's, it's really that, data, that simple. So I'm reading in image data from up here. I'm going to center on it based on this. And I'm going to set the crop size as I did right there. And this will basically create an array. Uh, that has that center in there. It's really, it's nothing more than an array. Um, so then I'm going to create an image sample, which I'm going to take some of the information out of the image header, which I set, which I read in up here. I'm going to take that information, I'm going to basically build the image sample. So I want the pick type. Pick type is, at least in the sky X, it indicates what type of image it is. If it's a bias, it's a dark, it's a light, etc. Check the documentation on that. Image type 2 is... Um, is bias, uh, for example. Uh, so then I put in here for references uh, the full frame geometry, just so I can see here, and the crop geometry. The reason I put that in there is I want to be able to do checks to make sure I didn't recrop something that was already cropped. And then the exposure time. Again, this is all out of the fit setter. The CCD temperature at the time of exposure. And I'm going to do some basic statistics on it using NumPy. So I'm going to look at the min, the max, and the mean for that crop, the standard deviation. 
and then the data itself is the crop basically the array right here so I can actually this lets me do further processing on this uh, I can do it mathematically I can actually plot it out when I when you plot that array it looks like a fits file um, and then join it to a main data set so that I have one basic giant dictionary of all the files and I can dive into each one of those and represent them. So we'll go ahead and run this. This doesn't have any output. But you'll see it takes a second or two because of the number of files here. Just wait for the asterisk to, uh, to turn to a number and that's when it's done. Not too bad. Not too bad for about 30 files of 32 megs each. Keeping in mind everything that it did there. Um, it's there. Cons consider um, consider what PixInsight would look like. You'd have to open all the files, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and for you know very focused use case like this, you can create this tool and it can just run on the fly without having to open PixInsight much faster. All right, so um, I didn't mean to put that in there. So you can you can edit these things on the fly too, which is nice. <clears throat> so here I just did a little for loop. <clears throat> to go through the data set that I created up here. And I'm going to print out X, which X is going to be the file name, um, <clears throat> which was set here. This, this would be the X value. Um, so I'm setting a key, and this is going to be the value, the value being the image sample data. So it's kind of a nested dictionary. It's a dictionary within a dictionary. Uh, so I'm going to print out the file name, and then I'm going to print out some of the header information. <clears throat> the CCD temperature, it's gonna, I'm going to do new line, so it's going to be on a new line for each one. Um, <clears throat> basically the image type, exposure time, uh, and then the standard deviation. And then for giggles, I'm just going to show each one below the data output for that. So I'll run that right now. And it's still processing. More or less just rendering all those images. keeping in mind how many there are. It's also building, as you can see, I used color bar right here. And color bar creates this little, little uh, detail over here. Okay, it's done. It's probably been done for a couple of seconds. And you can see what we have here is output. This is the file name, type. Oh, I put the temperature up here. Let's um, So I'm going to show you how quickly, how quick it is to, to reset that. So we're going to say uh, temp. So I want a new line mat so it's not on the same as the file name. Let's see how that is right there. All right, now I can just run it again. Yeah. Uh, you can do all sorts of stuff like this. You can do image calibration. Uh, it doesn't need to be done actually with Jupyter. I mean, all this stuff can be taken right out and run as a Python script at the command line, run on a cron job. Um, <clears throat> AstroPy and the other tools are so unbelievably powerful. You can do so many things all automated uh, without ever having to uh, start clicking on things, etc. Once you write the script, you just kind of let it go. Hope this was helpful.